Brothers and sisters, happy feast of one of the greatest saints in the life of the church, an incredible saint, especially for our times, uh, a model of Eucharistic love and devotion, a, a model of, of someone whose heart is completely consumed with God and therefore also consumed with love for each other, for others. Um, and this is a great St. Mary Magdalene. She's the patroness of the Dominican order. So from very early on in my own journey, I have fallen in love with her, uh, her prayer. I have a bunch of friends too who, who absolutely love her, which uh, God given gifts to me in my life where God has given me people who understand the heart of Mary Magdalene, understand who she is in the life of the church and understand her timely message, who she is for us today. I wanna to share with you something that happened to me today that, that is God speaking to me personally, I think. And uh, it ties in and confirms for me the timeliness of Mary Magdalene and also how she is an icon very much of, of, of the very message and heart of, of a saint like St. Therese of Lisieux um, from very early on right there in the gospel. So let's, let me explain. Um, I've been for weeks now preparing this 33-day consecration to the merciful love of Jesus. Um, some of you might know this book. It's by Father Michael Gately, and it's powerful. I've done it before, and it has really touched my heart. It has really had an impact on me, and I wanted to do it again because I wanted to to really have these weeks, these days, 33 days of really meditating again on the mercy of God, on, on his heart, and upon, and upon my own weakness in that sight of his mercy, which is the heart of the gospel. St. Paul says, you know, we can boast of our weakness because it's in our weakness that we find that we are strong so what happened today basically i've been preparing for this retreat with saint Therese of Lisieux, uh, her doctrine her wisdom um and it i didn't set out that it would end today on the feast of mary magdalene but it's perfect because mary magdalene like i said is her whole life is screams the gospel of mercy she was a big sinner she was possessed by so many demons the scriptures say jesus exorcised seven demons out of her uh she she was known to in chapter seven of luke's gospel when she's there at the feet of jesus the simon the pharisee in his house says jesus if you knew if you were a prophet and you knew who was touching you you won't let her touch you and then he says simon since i've been in your house you haven't anointed me you haven't done x y and z but here she is she's come in she's been loving me and it will be said of her throughout the whole world wherever the gospel goes. And, and that's literally a prophecy we could read in Luke's gospel has come true. What, what she did in that tiny moment has become enshrined in the gospel and enshrined in art and paintings and in, 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 in so much since the gospel has spread throughout the world. And, and, and this is just shows you how one act of incredible humble adoration has an effect through time, has an effect through time. And she really got deep. Mary Magdalene knows deeply in her heart the mercy of God. And this mercy sets her on fire. Sets on fire. Uh, it, it, it just totally makes her heart burning with a seeking and a desire to remain with the Lord. And, and, and in St. Therese's message that I've been doing these weeks, this is, it's really about one confronting one's weakness like knowing that one is free, that really everything is grace. It's a gospel of grace, that Christianity is not a religion of human efforts. Um, yes, there's asceticism, but in one sense, sense as all asceticism, as Father Jacques Philippe would say, is destined to fail because it's, it's not human effort only. It's, it's about, first of all, God's initiative, about God's grace, his free gift. And this is the heart of the gospel message. It's mercy. That God just freely chooses us to know him, freely chooses us to receive the sacraments, freely chooses us to receive his grace pouring out through the sacraments. And we have to do the best that we can, but even the best that we do is, is all his grace. So Christianity is really about learning to succumb and surrender to this movement of grace so that even our good works, all these things, they're not, we can't boast of it, any of it. It's not our human effort. It's, 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 it's God working through us. Our works that will save us is God's grace working through us, is, is, is signs that we are in grace, signs that we are being moved by the Holy Spirit, signs that, that God is alive in our life. 
And so what, inc what happened to me today that really confirmed all of this was that in this 33 day consecration, um, to pray with St. Therese of Lisieux, a friend just messaged me out of the blue, a friend who didn't even know I was doing this consecration. And she, she said, and she, I never sell them hair from this friend in one sense. And she just said, I was in, I'm in Lisieux, where St. Therese body is buried, so Therese of Lisieux. And I, I went to the side altar and I wrote your name in a book for priests that a mass would be offered, you know, for priests on the first Thursday of every month. And I was like, wow, here am I, today is my consecration day and has, God has allowed a friend to be in Lisieux to, uh, to put my name into this book. And it was just a little sign from heaven that heaven is awake, that heaven sees us, heaven knows what we're doing because heaven is at work in what we do. And that's the heart of Mary Magdalene's life, heart of the life of St. Therese.